In this episode, I'm going to look at a mono Class D amplifier I got from IC Station to evaluate, and uh, there's nothing special about this. We're going to load it down, see what it does, and uh, see if I can blow it up. This is a, a TPA 3116D2 based mono amplifier. Has an input voltage of 12 to 16 volts. They claim 150 watts, but it's going to be less than that. Into a 4 to 8 ohm load. 14 to 100 kilohertz is the frequency response and has a signal to noise ratio of 100 dB. Let's uh, check this one out. We're going to hook this up to the scope and we're going to load this thing down and see how it performs. So I just noticed that the heat sink is not bonded. That's already a fail. Looks like maybe this got banged up in transport and the heat sink has come off of it. Which isn't good. We're going to have to glue this back down or this IC is going to overheat. And I don't have any heat sink glue uh, or heat transfer glue. It looks like they glued this thing on with the uh, just standard looks like crazy glue is what it looks like but needless to say this one arrived and as you can see the heat sink itself has separated and the only thing I can think of is that in shipment you can see that the package is kind of chewed up I have a feeling that in shipment it's been manhandled a bit and that is a problem but we'll still run this thing through its test it, it may overheat We'll, we'll put the heat sink on it when I test it. I'll hold it down. It may overheat, but before I put this thing into any type of service, if I put it into service, uh, I'm going to have to bond that again. But I can't do that now for the video as I don't have any means of bonding it. So we're going to connect it to power. Here's our, our terminals on here. Speaker output goes over to here. Positive and negative output. We've got a positive and negative input and our power supply, which is 12 to 16 volts. We're going to run it near the higher end of that scale and we'll put some, uh, put some tones and so forth into this thing. We'll look at it on the scope and I'm going to load this thing down and see how much power we can push through this thing. For the power load test, I got myself a 50 watt 8 ohm resistor. I've actually got two so that I can do stereo power amplifiers. Uh, we should be able to heat this thing up pretty hot with this unit, I would think. I'm just going to get some wire and wire this up. We'll wire it to the amplifier, we'll put power to it, and we'll put a sine wave source into it and just crank the living crap out of this thing and see what it does. At least with the missing heat sink, we can actually see the components that are normally covered up by the heat sink. So here's some, probably a muting transistor. Could be, no, maybe not. Looks like it's in the audio path, but um, preamp. Here's our preamp going to the volume control. Right, the volume control is going into the preamp, and this is driving into the IC. These could be part of the muting circuit, actually. Um, power coming in, going in through these resistors here, and then here's our our output. Obviously, this is a Class D or a pulse width modulator amplifier (PWM). So our PWM signal comes out and it's filtered through the inductors and the low pass filter and heads out to the speaker, in this case the 8 ohm 50 watt dummy load. So I don't really want to uh, drown everybody out here with lots of noise. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but they're actually filming a movie just a, a few doors down from me. And the, I go outside right now and all the trees are all lit up like daytime because they've got these just massive uh, floodlights lighting up the whole area. So it's uh, yeah, Hollywood North, right? So they're shooting right in my backyard, literally. Well, not quite in my backyard, but they're, they're pretty close. They're just uh, a few houses away from me tonight. There's a, there's a hotel or a motel that's uh, fairly close to me, and they, they shoot there on a regular basis, and they basically rent... And they make it look like any other, you know, they, they, they change the name of it and, and uh, make it look like any place, any small town. It's kind of cool, but they're, they're out here on a regular basis, you know, several times a year filming. I'd be probably filming all night. 
Last time they were filming out here, I think Johnny Depp was out in the area. So the last movie he was making, he was uh, out in the area here. Okay. Okay, I've got the unit connected. Uh, I've got my dummy load connected over here. I haven't connected power yet. I've got my audio input going to my sine wave generator. This is set for sine wave. I'm going to connect power. Again, I don't have the heat sink on right now. But uh, I can now look at the output on the scope. And uh, we're going to increase our level here and see what type of a level we get on this thing before it uh, distorts. I'll uh, show you guys the scope I'm just setting up here. And we'll take a look at the voltage that we're getting off this unit. And I'm going to crank this unit up to the point where we get distortion. And I'll monitor the temperature of this thing while I'm at it. So let's get a shot of the scope and we'll watch the power level come up. We won't hear anything because obviously I've got it into a dummy load so I don't have to blow out my ears and everybody else with an earshot as I run this thing up to maximum power. Well we can see looking at the uh, the scope here every so often you'll see the carrier frequency leak through about 193 kilohertz is what I was seeing a little bit of leak through here see a little a couple little spikes here of of uh, signal not quite sure what that is but we're seeing a couple little spikes and we're going to start putting power to this thing right now uh, I'm on five volts per division so as we bring up power okay we've got uh, about 10 volts peak to peak there looks like RMS is showing 3.46 but we can look at the peak to peak voltage here and I'll continue to increase this until we start to, to clip and there we are starting to clip right there so I'll back it down a little below the point of clipping we'll just look at this here on a different scale and as you can see we're getting about 9.92 volts RMS. Remember that the uh, input voltage is 15.9. I can bring this up a little bit. We'll take it up to 16 volts. So it shouldn't affect it much anyway, but I'm operating at the maximum of 16 volts. Minimum on here is 12. And of course, as I reduce the power, the, uh, the voltage coming in, as you can see, the waveform is now becoming quite distorted. So we'll take our power back up to our 16 volts, which is what the uh, maximum uh, rated power is, is 16 volts. So now we're running at 16.0 volts. Got my finger on the chip here. The chip is not even getting warm at this point. I barely feel any heat. At 16 volts, we are drawing so about 830 milliamps at 16 volts of power. And that is producing about the maximum power that we're going to get out of this unit before we start to get into clipping finger on top of the chip again still not even getting warm as I increase the power more as you can see we are now into distortion so we've got clean power to uh, what do we got here 5, 10 or divisions 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 almost 30 volts peak to peak on this thing from the 16 volt input again this is a, a bridged output a, a a balanced load, right? Bridge tied load. So each amplifier is operating out of phase with each other. There's two amplifiers. We have 16 volts going in. So in theory, each amplifier can produce about a 15 volt signal. So we've got one amplifier producing the positive swing that we see here going 5, 10, you know, 15 volts. And then the other amplifier, 5, 10, 15 volts. That's how we're getting a 30 volt um, peak to peak on the scale here because this is as you can see it's measuring five volts per division and on the positive side I see a couple little spikes of noise that shouldn't be there one thing that is getting smoking hot the amplifier itself is cool uh, the <laughs> the dummy load on the other hand is so hot that I can't even touch it this thing is smoking this resistor just how hot did that resistor get well let's put it this way it's been off for five minutes while I went and got the temperature probe. Uh, I had this resistor so hot over the course of, I don't know, uh, four or five, not even that, maybe three or four minutes of running this thing at full power. 
this thing does have some serious power as you can see uh, it's 46 degrees Celsius and this thing's been off for a few minutes it was much hotter than that if I crank this thing back up here point before clipping and we'll watch how hot this thing gets quickly Now this is at maximum power, sine wave, no clipping. And this is heating this 50 watt resistor up, very warm. As you can see it's at you know, 45 degrees Celsius now. 46. This temperature gauge I believe only goes up to 50. So, um, yeah, it's warm. It's putting out a lot of power, as you can see. This thing is putting out a lot of power. We'll check the temperature of the IC, and I'm just going to let this thing cool down because obviously the, the probe is real hot right now. So, let's put this on the IC itself. The IC itself isn't even warm, like, it's dead cold. So, now I'll just put the the temperature sensor on the IC. And it looks like the IC is running at around 24 degrees. And that's with no heat sink, 24.4. That's with no heat sink. We'll crank it back up to maximum power again just before clipping. And we'll see what the temperature of the IC gets to with no heat sink. So as you can see, the, the IC itself is not getting warm. Uh, the heat sink that, that's on there is just to keep it cool, uh, even cooler than this. Now I guess if you were to run this thing for prolonged periods of time, it could produce a little bit of heat, but really uh, there's not a lot of heat produced in these um, ICs. They're, they are fairly efficient. If I go back over to the, the resistor again here, you'll see how hot this thing is. This resistor is just smoking. So that's our test for the power output. Next, you guys want to hear how this sounds. So I'm going to connect this. I'll disconnect my power for now. I'm going to connect. I'm going to disconnect the dummy load, which I, which is so hot I can't even hang on to it. That thing is just, just cooking. I'm going to disconnect the dummy load and I'm going to connect a speaker, and we'll put some music through this thing and see how it sounds. So first I've got my tone generator still going through here. <coughs> this is a sound wave. We're going to disconnect the tone generator and I'll just bring my MP3 player in. And we'll just plug the MP3 player into here. And see how this thing sounds. Remember, it's only mono, so we've only got one speaker connected, and I can just adjust the volume right here.
Uh, my conclusion on this, and it's going to be very brief, this amplifier might be great if you're building a subwoofer, but uh, as far as it being a hi-fi amplifier, I would say no. Uh, the, they say the specifications is, uh, what did I say, it was 16 to 100 kilohertz? Yeah, it doesn't seem to go, the, it, I mean, the treble is not there. It, it doesn't sparkle. In the bass frequencies, it sounds fine. And when I did crank this thing up to clipping, I could feel heat in the, in the IC. So, uh, I mean, this one here, the heat sink is kind of buggered up on it, but uh, normally that wouldn't be the case. This one, I just think, got beat up going through the mail and got bashed around. But um, uh, I think for a, if you're building a subwoofer, this might be a, a little amplifier that you could certainly make use of. As far as it being hi-fi, well, let's say it, it, it's not bad but it's not great and you know i'm driving two speakers here that, so that i can hear it out of both speakers it's mono obviously but uh, you know, it's, there's no or not a lot of high end but there's I don't hear a lot of high end so just just from those observations alone I would say that this unit is uh, set up as a subwoofer amplifier. The equalization is built in to this unit. It's setting this up for a bass amplifier and that is what I would recommend if you're looking at one of these little amplifiers. If you're building yourself a subwoofer this probably is going to do the job quite nicely. And it is a mono amplifier so that is typically what people would use something like this for would be a do-it-yourself subwoofer module. And for that I think it's going to do the job but as a hi-fi amplifier, I couldn't recommend, say, buying two of these to make a stereo system. This, uh, this module here, from everything that I can see from listening to it and testing it, it's set up to perform best in the low frequency to mid frequency range. In other words, for use driving a woofer. Thanks for watching. Link to this is in the description.